Okay guys, I'm not going to bore you with the details on how to raise the car and support it with jack stands and how to remove the wheel on your 3 Series E46 generation BMW. But what I'm basically doing here when I'm removing the end link pieces is um, I've got to get a Torx T30 bit at a 16 millimeter wrench. And basically the whole process of how we go about uh, replacing the end links when they develop some play is that uh, initially, we want to make sure that we soak these uh, end link pieces on the strut tower and the lower section on the sway bar assembly with lots and lots of WD-40. I think I must have sprayed it four or five times and walked away for, from it for probably at least an hour or so to uh, allow the oil to penetrate it. And then to gain better access to this assembly, I basically started the vehicle and then turned the steering wheel all the way to the right to allow... Uh, this end link piece to be exposed a little bit easier and then of course the next step is to use a wrench to break that loose first um, without actually using the torques but just break it loose uh, by hand and then from that point you basically just uh, use your uh, 16 millimeter wrench and torques bit to remove the uh, end link assembly so basically what I'm going to do here is I'm going to remove the lower side because I've already broken everything loose and I'm essentially just going to lay here and basically just use my wrench to slowly undo the uh, end link piece. Now, you kind of have to mess around with it. And I'm not sure how well you guys can actually see me doing this work. Um, but in a nutshell, make sure that your torque bit is nice and sharp and, well, make sure it's new and it fits in the hole perfectly. If your end of your end link isn't completely clean and there's a bit of dirt in it and you can't get that bit in perfectly, then what's going to happen is you might potentially slip the Torx bit in the hole and then the resultant effect is going to be, uh, good luck getting this out, you're going to have to end up getting a saw or something to uh, take this entire assembly out. And no one wants to do that because that's a lot of work and that's a bitch to deal with. So in a nutshell, I broke the lower piece loose now this is what I meant earlier when I said to use your wrench to break the upper bolt or the upper nut loose is that what happens is when you have your end link here that you're replacing after you've sprayed it with lots and lots of oil you want to break the uh, nut loose first and then once that's been broken we then go ahead and then take our Torx T30 bit to hold the uh, center core from rotating. So give you a better angle of view. So now what I can do is I can use my ratchet and essentially turn the center of the end link the opposite direction, in this case clockwise, which is really unscrewing the uh, little nut piece off of the end link. However way you want to do it, you can use the wrench it to undo it or you can twist the center of the Torx it's up to you if you really have badly corroded end links then uh, I would advise that you uh, let the penetrating oil work overnight so this is a brand new end link that I purchased from BMW and prior to the reinstallation um, I covered the ends with a tremendous amount of Permatex uh, anti-seize compound and of course I've also purchased two brand new nuts so the install process for an end link is essentially the same as well reverse opposite of how we removed it so um, take your time doing it make sure that you loop it through properly to the bottom of your sway bar and uh, proceed to do the install so these nuts are a special nut that has, I believe, a slight taper to them on the inside. And the reason why they're special is I think they're a one-time use nut where as you tighten them up, they get really tight and they're supposed to hold the suspension together. So make sure that when you buy new end link pieces that you do go ahead and buy the nuts along with it. Now. Always before installing the new end links, 
check the end of your Torx bit to make sure that all the edges are still nice and sharp so it holds it nice and firm. Place your 16 millimeter wrench like this in such a manner and then you can now begin the tightening process or in because I'm using the Torx bit to do the tightening, I'm actually uh, turning it in a counterclockwise as if I was unscrewing, right? Because opposite direction, where the nut is going counterclockwise is loosening. But since the nut's not moving, then the core has got to go counterclockwise to really screw into this piece. Now, as you're tightening, make sure that the bit is always square in the Torx hole. Because if it's not, I can guarantee you, you're going to end up doing some damage. And pretty much when we're doing the tightening, the final tightening stage is we can just use our wrench and just snug that down a hair. You don't need to make these crazy tight. As long as they're snug, that's all that needs to be done. So let's now proceed. I said, let's proceed down to do the uh, lower assembly. So guys, I'm not going to demonstrate to you how to do, you know, the other side. It's exactly the same. Just turn your steering wheel in the appropriate direction that you need to go in so that you can uh, make the assembly process that much easier. And of course, take your time. Rushing will always result in failure. So basically what I'm doing here is that because of the limited clearance I have underneath the control arm, I'm going to have to unfortunately tighten this uh, end link by hand, which is fine because there's it will tighten, it just takes a lot longer to do. And the reason why I'm replacing these end links is because when the vehicle got inspected, I was told that my end links were starting to develop a little bit of play in the suspension. And of course, that will lead to all sorts of clunking noises and sort of wonky handling of, of this car. And so it was an easy fix. It just takes time, and the parts are certainly not exactly the cheapest thing in the world, but had to be done. You know, whenever you guys are tightening end links or any part on a BMW that requires a torque fit, I want you guys to make sure that you do pay attention to the um, placement of your torque fit inside the, uh, the Torx heads. The reason why is if it's even slightly off, you could potentially strip the Torx head and so always make sure that it's positioned properly save yourself a whole bunch of heartache and that's basically it guys so in a nutshell we replaced an end link assembly on a 3 series E46 generation chassis BMW 330xi which is my car and that's essentially all it is in a nutshell. Fairly straightforward. You know, for those that are really anal about corrosion, you can always coat um, the exposed threads here with more anti-seize just to seal it from the elements or try your best to seal it from the elements should you ever decide to replace these ever again. I hope you found this video useful and informative. Rate, comment, and subscribe.